Hello, my beerlings, and welcome to another chapter in the College of Dwarfology textbook. Today, we're going to be covering how to go from middle management to upper management. Yes, we're going to do an introduction to the management system, in this particular instance, as it pertains to the clothing industry. Now, the clothing industry is in three separate cycles. We will address each cycle individually, and one of the cycles is just automated from the beginning, so you don't have to do anything to begin with. To point out how early this can be done, all I have done is these basic six dwarf to feed 150 setup that I've covered in a previous video. There's nothing else going on here. This is not a late game thing. You can do this basically from the very beginning. Now of import, for what I've done to make sure that this is year round, I have created an above ground farm and it is growing rope reeds. The below ground clothing plant only grows in August and August, uh, summer and fall. And, <laughs> and I've decided to switch up for the above ground rope reed as it grows year round. We will not be doing dying in this episode, but if we were, I would probably be doing blade weed because I like the color of green. Now, the first cycle of how to grow your own clothing infinitely, so you don't have to worry, is already done. I've already slipped it into your little minds without you knowing. See, what you, the first cycle to growing clothing is that you grow rope reed and then you use a farmer's workshop to process it. When you process rope reed, you will get back thread, you will get back one thread and two seeds, I believe, which means you will have the seeds immediately being planted by the farmers, which are already automated, and the thread will go somewhere else. What do we actually need to do for the farmers would require just a little bit of foreground in what a manager is. If you do not know, for some reason, a manager is a noble that you assign yourself. He needs absolutely nothing except one chair. I've given him a bare minimum room, but he really can just do with one chair that is set to a one by one room. At the beginning of the game, I usually make my manager and bookkeeper just basically be the same dwarf as they both have the same requirements, a chair by itself. I happen to have been a little nice and spoiled mine and given him an entire office to himself, but again, nothing is really required. You need a manager in that role for anything involving management to work. There are three ways to access the management screen. One is if you hit J for jobs, you'll see down here that we have M for manager. This is the general manager screen. This screen is where you would probably want to put in emergency, I need 20 of this, I need 40 of that. This can be used for automation. However, you can end up accidentally using the wrong workshops, for your automated jobs, slowing down what you're doing in the future. So I would not suggest doing a lot of automated jobs from this screen. Another way to access the exact same screens, if you hit U for units, you also have a manager button at the bottom of the unit screen. That brings you to the same general management screen. Now I keep comparing general, what is not general? If you go to any workshop, you will see once you have a manager that you can hit capital P to enter the workshop profile. This allows you to choose who is allowed to work here, meaning if you want a workshop using only your legendary dwarves to make your beds, you can have a legendary woodworker, for instance, and a job that's automated to make beds or just set to repeat whatever you want for high quality. You can use the management system Without using an actual manager, you can just use it here to set someone in particular, though that is not, uh, depth of that will be covered in a different video, same as labor restrictions. However, under work orders, by using four and six to move between the different menus, we have the work orders to set the jobs for this workshop and this workshop alone. From this screen, we can decide to limit how many work orders are allowed from the general workshop screen by uh, default, it allows five. I have lowered it to one. In all three screens, uh, or should say in both screens, because there's three ways, but you only access two screens. In both screens, you hit Q to do a new order, R to remove, this is about the same. So if we hit Q to do a new order, on the primary management screen, we'd have a lot more, but today we're focused in on just the uh, clothing industry. When you hit Q inside a specific workshops management screen, it'll only give you the choices of what that particular workshop can do. 
In this case, for tier one of clothes making, the thread portion of this, we are going to do process plants. Whenever you put in a request for a job, it'll ask you how many do you want to do? That is not how many do you need right now? That is how many do you want it to try to do every time the job triggers? For a lot of jobs that you're gonna to wanna to have automated, you're going to choose a number greater than one. This is not the system to use for something you just need to get done right now. Though it can be entered into the general one to save you clicking around your base, do not use this for individual ones unless you're just trying to micro for micro's sake. For the purpose of this example, we will be putting in five like the one I already have in. Once you have put one in, you're not quite done. By default, what you've now done is said, I need you to once do this job. But if we're using a manager, we're probably wanting this job to happen more than once. In this case, for a clothing industry, we're gonna want unlimited uh, thread. Well, not unlimited, but we don't wanna have to micro every time we need thread. So we, we are gonna come down here and we see that if we hit C, we can enter conditions. And conditions are the conditions of doing this job again. So a lot of jobs, you will have reagents or the items required to make the job happen and products or what is made from your job that you can set as your condition. Unfortunately, processing plants can have different types of products. It's a rather general job order. So we're not allowed to specify from the products though we could from item condition, again, not covered in this particular video. We are gonna hit reagents for this, for this particular step and it will default to 10 and it will default to at least. Now there are a couple of different types of inequalities in the management system. There is at least and at most, which self-explanatory, do you have at least this or do you have at most this? There is greater than and less than, which is basically the inverse of what you just did, they kind of do the same thing with a different uh, emphasis on what you're trying to do. So just be aware of what you're actually looking at. There is exactly a not, which is so generic and so particular, I don't foresee that ever coming up in any management thing. It's nice that they're there, but I don't see anyone being that specific with what they're doing for orders other than crazy, like high-end, I made a computer in Dwarf Fortress style things. So we're gonna leave this with at least, i.e. I want you to only process five plants, as we see up here, if you have at least X amount of unrotten processable plants. Now we don't have a use for the plants other than to process them. So I'm gonna lower this all the way down to seven. I always like to make there be a little bit of a safety in the off chance that a dwarf gets interrupted while doing this because the job might still be active or an item might get lost. So I like there to be a little bit of leeway so that you don't get cancellation spam if something ends up happening to some of the uh, items before the full five jobs are able to be done. This is what I already have going. So I'm gonna delete the one that I've already done. And in terms of generating thread, you're, you're no joke done. You're gonna have to do a little bit at the beginning to get it going before you have seven plants at one time. You'll never trigger this. So a couple of times you'll have to come back here, say process plants and repeat. However, at some point it will become active. There will be seven active plants. And once the manager has started taking over because you've hit your whatever prerequisite you already set, it'll feed itself because what you're doing is you're waiting until you grow up seven plants, you grab five of them and you tell them the process. Each one, each one will give you one thread and two seeds. Your farmer's already an automated job. He'll take the seeds and plant them. You're planting more than you're eating. This is just gonna feed itself. Once the farmer's workshop starts to do itself, you're golden, this is automated. You don't need a baby it ever again, 100% done. The second step, is to take thread and turn it into cloth. You, you're already done. You don't need to do anything unless you wish to be particular about the amount of thread you have lying around. I don't worry about thread too much because if you're constantly making it, at some point the thread will hit the ground and you're going to have excess thread that's gonna be able to be claimed by the hospital because the loom is only going to be doing it one at a time. So all the other thread will not be claimed 
and if you really need it, it's going to get grabbed as it's needed to be grabbed. You'll be fine. If, however, you don't want it doing this, on the main set of orders, you can do O for set order, and then you can do a capital W for workshop. And you can change this to only auto loom dyed thread, which we're not dying right now, but if you wish to, you could. I don't necessarily think that's important as you can just dye cloth as well, but you could use the dyeing system as a way to regulate how much of your cloth is going through. Or you could say, don't auto loom at all. If we were not to auto loom, we could do the same thing we did before. We could do capital P to create a workshop profile, go to work orders with four and six, hit Q, and we'll see here that again, we only can choose what this workshop can do. We're gonna say weave thread in the cloth. And I'm, I'm actually just gonna put in the same orders. We're gonna do a condition of the reagent and set that down to seven or something. And you might have to babysit Oh, actually, no, you wouldn't. It's just eventually you'll have enough thread built up because the system's already just being generated from the first stage that at some point this will start doing it on its own. If you were doing it this way, or should I rephrase that and say the reason why you would do it this way is for instance, if I increase this all the way to 15, what this would mean is that I'll have at minimum 10 thread not being used. And the off chance I had a mood or I just installed a new hospital and I want them to grab a ton of thread, like an absolute ton of thread real fast, you can set yourself a limit of, I want you to build this much thread before you start turning it into cloth. In this case, you're paying attention to the difference. At 15, we'll do five, meaning that we'll, we're basically keeping 10 in stock. Unlike the last one, we can do conditions from products. And if I put in a P, I can see whether or not I want it to only make cloth if we have below a certain amount. I don't see that ever at this stage ever being that much of an issue. I don't see why you need to keep that much thread. Probably better to keep it as cloth, but that's on your, you know, your, your personal decisions. So I'm going to delete all of this because I'm just going to right now just stick to having them do it automatically. Uh, I don't want to pay attention to that or any of its numbers, and I'm not worried about dying right now. So again, default options, stage two handles itself. You're good. Stage three is where it gets a little complicated. So as you can see here, I've actually let this run a little bit and so that it starts generating up cloth because this is the most complicated part of this is you don't want them assigning too many things at once and causing an issue. So what I've done is I have set a lot of jobs and you can tell here that the manager has assigned these with the letter O on the right, as in this job has been ordered. A, a green A means active, no letters normally means you ordered it, but no one's doing it. And an exclamation mark, of course, is the do task now thing. And O means the manager sent this, it's being tracked by some other system. So if I go into this workshop profile, we can see that I have already ordered a lot of these things. What I would suggest, and the reason why I brought up permitted workers earlier, is whoever you end up having at this stage with the highest level clothes making, probably only permit this workstation to that dwarf, whoever it so happens to be. Um, I don't really quite remember who my clothier is at this time. I'm just gonna make this up and say leather worker. It's probably not him, but we'll say that it was the leather worker. For some reason, he has the skills. Now we have all of these correction. I apologize. I skipped out on the easier system to do. What you can also do once you have enough dwarves of sufficient skill in this job, is you can go down here and say your minimum skill required to do this. So if as long as we have two or three competent clothes making dwarves, we can just start raising the skill up until such time as we have a couple who have hit legendary and we just say only legendary dwarves are able to do this. That way in the future, you're not having to pay attention and you're not having to micromanage who's doing it. You can just manage it by skill as well. Should have remembered to point that out to begin with. If at some point you have made a mistake, you can always just hit the number one and that just frees up everyone to do the job. Now, under work orders, this is the most complicated step in actually having a clothing industry. And that is, you need to make sure to cover all the bases. If you only make shirts, pants, and shoes, 
your dwarves are still going to have negative thoughts because they don't necessarily have a robe or a hat or socks, things like that. So I've gone through as I put in eight different orders, a robe, a shirt, a vest, a cloak, trousers, glove, cap, socks, and shoes. There are other clothings under cloth that we could have also done, but some of them, and this is just for clothing, not for armor or anything, are not required necessarily at the same time. Gloves and mittens, you don't necessarily need. Cap and hood. When you have someone specifically wanting hoods, or you're wanting to look into, say, having a cloth cap and a leather hood for more defensive purposes, that is an entirely different setup. For right now, we just wanna make sure that we never have a dwarf with clothes rotting off their body and accruing negative thoughts because the less clothes they have, the worse this is, and the nicer clothes they have, the happier they are. Because if you have someone doing this all the time, they're going to quickly become legendary, and this is gonna make a lot of dwarves very happy. So, for each of these items, I've created a condition off of the product and a condition off of the reagents. Now, I counted before the video recording this number incorrectly as eight, not nine. So I had set it to three times that amount. In this case, it probably should have been 27, but realistically, this number is me being probably way too safe. What I would say as a minimum is two times. So in this case, probably 18 would have been the good number. And the reasoning why is your dwarf is doing each of these as an end, your manager dwarf is doing each of these as an individual order, but something might happen. The dwarf might have gotten in a fight, had to go to the hospital, had gotten too drunk, you know, uh, been scared off by something invading your base. So if you go down, say five of these, and then the guy gets interrupted, these four won't leave the queue until such time as he's able to do them. But if the manager doesn't have an issue, he can reorder these ones fine, as long as that numbers are still being met. So if you set it for eight, when he grabs this one, he'll say, oh, I have eight, oh, I have eight, oh, I have eight, oh, I have eight, oh, I have, because these ones haven't even been done yet. Even if you would order to be subtracting, you might have an issue by the time you start actually scrolling back around. So I would suggest at minimum, assume that you can that you have to do the entire list twice this is me being careful but that is the number i tend to go with but for this particular video i try to go for three times the amount just because this is also the very beginning a lot of doors can be outside and getting worn down um it's just on you how careful you want to be as it applies to the reagents other side of this is i've set a condition on the product on each of these products i set it to the opposite style instead of at least it is at most. In other words, I want him to build robes until there is at most four. If he checks it and there is five robes, he's not supposed to make any more. I don't want to flood my base with clothing. That is an issue with people on, we'll say, weaker computers, where they've generated so many things that the sheer items can bog them down. I don't think this would come up a lot, but the clothing industry is one of the ones where if this is a problem, it could be one of the ones causing it. Just because of the sheer amount of each one has to have its own individual quality, and there's so many steps in making it. And also there is the issue of you can't get rid of them. Dwarves right now have a bug where as soon as they get to one small X of damage on their say shirt, and they see a fresh shirt, they will switch their clothing over to the fresh shirt, but they will not necessarily unclaim their old shirt, meaning you will have it, all your dwarves are hoarders and you'll have an issue. There are some DF pack issues to fix this, but in the future, whatever the source coding issue with it is, that will be fixed. So I try to you know, limit it a little bit just to kind of be careful. If you wish, you could raise this number and just be trading off the excess at all times. Whenever a trade caravan comes in, if you have a dedicated dwarf to clothes making, you're going to have enough masterpiece clothing within a relatively short period of time that just like I said for shell crafts in a previous video, you could use this industry and also finance your entire base off of it 
If you have both industries going, you are definitely completely fine. If you have these two and the cooking industry automated, you, you are golden and you will never have a problem again other than your inevitable demise to loss of frames per second. One thing I would point out is gloves, socks, and shoes. Whenever you make these, you make them in pairs. So when you do the condition from products, make sure to double this because every time you're making two, if I said four, I might only have, or I might only have a couple of left gloves, for instance. You wanna make sure that you have these, these numbers for anything made in pairs slightly higher. Gloves, socks, shoes. If you have an automated metal system, it would be gauntlets for armor and high or low boots would be the numbers you'd wanna make sure to double up on. Once this is done, and again, that, that first bit, you will have to prime the pump, so to speak, and tell this one to repeat at the beginning until there is enough plants going around, but you get more seeds than plants. This grows itself, and you don't need to do anything from this. Because this is automated and grows more, and because the second step is automated, you really don't need to pay attention all the way up to the cloth phase. Like they're very simple. They handle themselves a little priming. There is some fiddliness with getting all of these orders in, but once they're in, it will go. You just have to have faith in it. It, it will eventually start being able to automate itself. Your big issue in this system is going to be, at some point, cut back on cloth production. You are going to end up making more than this guy is, than a, than one of these is going to be able to do. If you start doing two or three of these all doing the same thing, or you increase the numbers, this is going to cause a snowballing, possibly runaway effect. So you will at some point have to artificially constrain what you're doing. Um, in that case, what you're going to have to do is tell the farmer's workshop to stop. The, because there are different plants that can be done out of processing, you cannot do a condition from a product. If this video has been somehow educational or entertaining, give the video a thumbs up and definitely give the channel a subscription so that we can beat that most horrendous of efficiency losses, the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much for watching. Catch you guys next time.